Hey everyone, Tanner here and welcome back to another aquarium build. Today we're going to set up a tank for my Blue Dream Neocaridina shrimp. Like I said a few videos back, I want to set up a dedicated scape just for them, so that's what we're going to do in this video. That said, they won't actually be added to the setup in this video because the aquarium still has to cycle. Before we get started, why don't we go over the materials that I'll be using. Of course I've got a standard 10 gallon aquarium, nothing special here. For hardscape I've got some zebra stone. I really like how it looks and I don't think it's used nearly enough, so that was my motivation for using it in this scape. I'll also incorporate a few pieces of spider wood. Spider wood tends to float for a few days when you first get it. However if you boil it before use, 9 times out of 10 it will sink immediately. So rather than glue, tie down the wood, or anything else like that, I simply boiled them for about a half hour or so. The last major components that I have are some fluval stratum plant substrate, as well as some pool filter sand. We'll be using plants as well, but I'll show that later on in the video. Anyways, let's get into the build. To start, I dumped a decent amount of fluval stratum into the aquarium. I wish that I would have had just a bit more, but unfortunately, I used the last of it. Even still, there was enough for what I wanted to do. To even out or manipulate my substrate, I like to use a paintbrush. Doing so makes it just a little bit easier than using your hands. From here, we'll go ahead and get our hardscape materials and start scaping. Before actually putting anything in the tank, you'll notice that I moved the majority of the substrate to the back middle of the aquarium. I did this so that I can place most of the hardscape near the center back of the aquarium. That's not a look that I typically go for, but I have a very specific vision in mind for this aquarium. I want to create an islandscape of sorts, but I don't really want to categorize it as that because it's not quite what I have in mind. There are some challenges that come with the scape like I have in mind. Obviously since the scape will be focused towards the center, it's very easy to want to make things look symmetrical. However, we want to avoid symmetry because it's generally not found in nature and it makes for a less interesting aesthetic. Of course, that's easier said than done though. You'll notice that it took me several tries to end up with a design that I like, and that's very common for most of my setups. Occasionally I'll get it right the first time, but generally it takes a few tries. What I'm getting at is don't be afraid or too lazy to keep trying different layouts. As I've said in plenty of my other videos, the hardscape element of a setup, whether that's a terrarium, vivarium, or even this aquarium, is so important. It will dictate pretty much everything about your setup, including whether or not you like it. Which leads me into my next point. You don't need to make something because you think someone else will like it, or try to be like everyone else. Just scape and make something that you'll be happy with at the end of the day, and that your animals are going to like. I gotta say, I'm really enjoying the look of the zebra stone, and I think it will look really cool with the shrimp. I was originally saving them for a different scape, but I thought that they would be a better choice for the shrimp tank. I just think that the blue shrimp on black and white stones will be a really cool look and help showcase these animals. I also specifically chose the spider wood because of its features. Spider wood generally has a ton of little appendages and other intricacies that make for a cool scape. They will also create a lot of interesting climbing spaces for the shrimp, especially once they're covered in moss, and that's exactly what we want. We want to create a nice, enriching environment that's really going to showcase these shrimp. Once I got the scape to a point where I thought it was close to done, I moved most of the substrate to the back of the aquarium with my brush. Then I made a few minor adjustments to the scape before adding the sand. After I liked this look, I added a bit of pull filter sand to the front of the aquarium. I could have separated the substrates with barriers or other techniques, but I find that that's kind of a waste of time with the way that I make aquariums. Although I go into my builds with a loose idea in mind, I like to experiment as I work through the build. In other words, I just kind of let everything unfold organically based on the materials that I'm using. Now that the scape is pretty much done, we'll go ahead and use some Gorilla Glue gel to attach moss onto the spider wood. You don't have to use Gorilla Glue though, most cyanoacrylate super glues will work fine for this type of thing and are completely safe once cured. However, I will add that it's much easier to use a gel super glue because they don't run. To attach the moss, in my case flame moss, I just added a few dabs of glue and placed the moss on top of the glue. 
From there I like to apply a bit of pressure for a few seconds and then the moss should be completely attached. Throughout this process, don't worry about covering every bit of glue with moss because some will always show through. That said, give it a little bit of time and the moss will grow right over top of the glue. Using this technique, I went around the entire scape and glued moss all over the twigs. It took a little while to do this, but once it all grows in, I really think it's going to be an awesome feature to this aquarium. Now we'll finally set up the tank, but where should we start? Water, of course. After filling up the aquarium and treating the water, I went and added a few small accent stones. It was much easier for me to add these once the aquarium already had some water in it, so that's why I'm adding them now instead of earlier on in the build. I really think they help bring the overall aesthetic together, even though they are such a minute detail. Now let's move on to the plants. To start, I planted a large Bulbitis Udelotai. I purposefully chose this plant for its size because I wanted to arch over some of the scape. To keep with the large background plants, I then added a Cryptocorn Hudori. This is an awesome crypt because it's pretty large, has some nice color to it, and great texture. From there I added a red tiger lotus to the center of the scape. Initially it won't really be seen from this location, but as it stretches out it will really look cool. Most of these plants don't fill in the space quickly, so let's add some stem plants. I added several stems of Ludwigia repens rubin. This plant will get some nice color to it, will grow quickly, and the oval shaped leaves will help add some texture to the scape. Next I added a bit of Rotala Wallichi. Like the Ludwigia, this plant will get some nice color to it and add some great texture as well. Plus I think the shrimp are really going to like it. Next I planted various Cryptocorn Wenti in various locations of the aquarium. Then I placed a few patches of Fissidens moss to the foreground. I got three different species here courtesy of Mossy Jake on Instagram. I'll leave a link to his page down in the video description. Lastly, I added a few patches of Savasar Tong to various locations in the foreground. Long term, I want all of these to grow together and create a nice carpet up front. A carpet that's a little different and less maintenance than your typical carpeting plant. Now that we're all planted, let's go ahead and add the filter. Here I have an AquaClear 20. I'm using all of the media that it came with other than the carbon, as well as the cycled floss pad from one of my other tanks to help jumpstart the cycle. I also attached a filter sponge to the intake so that the shrimp won't get sucked up into the filter and to add additional surface area for beneficial bacteria. In the end, I think this turned out really well. Although it's primarily in the center of the aquarium, in my opinion, it's not too symmetrical and overall it's a pretty interesting scape to observe. Keep in mind that it really has to grow in, so if you think it looks off, just give it some time. Eventually, I want to go back and add some additional details such as small plants like Anubius Nana Petite or Busa Philandra, as well as some accent hardscape elements. You know how it is though, I can never leave these setups alone. I always have to improve and change things over time. I suppose that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy this type of art. There's always something that needs done, especially since it's all living. I did my best to capture this on camera, but like most of my setups, it's really hard to do them justice through a lens. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think this turned out pretty well, and if so, do you think the shrimp are going to look cool in it? Or perhaps there's something you would have done differently. Either way, let me know. I'm curious to see what you think. Anyways, that's all that I have for you on this one. 
I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did and hadn't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. It helps me know what type of content you want to see next. Also, if you like these type of projects, I recommend checking out my Instagram page for daily content just like this. On that, thank you so much for joining me, peace and love my friends, and I'll see you next time.